uh, I assume everybody can hear me okay, can see my screen. If you can, just uh, type in a quick why there in the questions box. Let me know you're, uh, it's all working good. And I'll assume that it is, and I'll start pressing forward. So, hey, it's always good to be here. Um, as uh, Renee said in her very nice introduction, I'm Dean Jenkins of followmetrades.com. And uh, I always enjoy this forum. And uh, Renee, thanks for inviting me back again. Um, I always look forward to it. And that was weird when it dropped. I, th I thought, uh-oh, did I do something? Did I push a button? I've never had that happen uh, uh, with uh, with an uh, investor inspiration thing before. <laughs> but I don't think it was me. I think somebody, someone else did it. But uh, I was just looking while we were waiting to get logged in here. I was looking through the names that people logged in, and I see that uh, uh, D.B. Cooper is here. So welcome. Glad you can make it. We've all wondered uh, where you've been. <laughs> anyway... Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk today. I'm going to do rapid scanning. We're going to go look for some good trades, and I'm going to talk about how I find trades. You know, and there's so many thousands of stocks and ETFs, and I primarily, you know, swing or trend trade stocks and options. And there's so many thousands of them out there to look for. How do you narrow it down to a manageable list? So I'm going to show you some of my techniques to do that today. And we're actually going to walk out of here with some really good trades. Uh, we're going to find some using my scanning techniques. And I'd be happy to take a look at any uh, uh, stock uh, trade ideas that you have and uh, give my opinion on them. So let's just jump right into it. So, of course, I'm a trader. I'm not a financial advisor. So I'm providing education information. I'm talking about what I do. Shouldn't take it as investment advice. Um, everybody's got to make their own decisions and assume the risk for those decisions. So, you know, again, I'm a trader. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, so I'm going to talk, I use Ichimoku Cloud and Elliott Wave together, and I think they form a pretty powerful combination. I say, you know, when the two systems, when East and West, when two systems agree, you know, profits can explode there. So I'm going to talk about real quickly a quick overview of just a simple Ichimoku Cloud uh, setup and what I'm looking for there. I'm going to talk about a very simple approach to Elliott Wave and about how I use them together. Then we're going to scan. We're going to go find some trades. I'm going to analyze any charts that you have that you're interested in. So if we get to that point, I'll ask and you know, maybe have some symbol ready, symbols ready. And I'll show you some of my favorite trades that I'm uh, looking at right now. Okay, so Ichimoku. Um, Ichimoku Cloud is developed by a Japanese fellow, actually a journalist, financial journalist back in the uh, 30s. Um, he started working on it. He didn't publish it until 1969. He spent a lot of time verifying the trading system. Right? I don't know if any of us have that kind of patience, uh, but it's pretty cool. This is what it looks like on TradeStation, and if you're TradeStation users, you'll go, that doesn't look like mine. Um, I changed some colors and stuff to uh, make it pleasing to my eye, and I also don't have the Chiku line turned on, if you're familiar. I don't use the Chiku line, but let's I think, I think Ichimoku Cloud, it's not a complete trading system in my mind, but it does a great job of really identifying trends and predicting some support and resistance areas for a trend. If you can see the cloud is extended out past current price bars, very few indicators predict. Most indicators are great at, uh, as a rear view mirror, what already happened. So I'm pretty excited about an indicator that predicts something and confirms uh, a trend. Some components of Ichimoku Cloud, there's what's called the Tencon line. I've bolded it here. I've got it yellow on my chart. It's very similar to a fast moving average line, simple moving average line. A little bit different math, but it looks pretty similar. Okay, and the same kind of deal, we have a fast line and a slow line. So the slow line in Ichimoku Cloud is called Kaijun, it's our, the basis line. So very similar, again, to a simple uh, moving average line with a, a longer term look back. Right, so you got a slow line and a fast line, and when they cross over, um, they can indicate trend change. But uh, sometimes there can be some false calls on that, so we don't act on that alone. So there's another line here. I got it in green. It's the edge of the cloud here, and it's called the span A, and that's call it you know going first or proceeding. It's it's the leading edge of the cloud in a in a bullish trend. It's on top, and a bearish trend. It's down on the bottom. So it's the leading edge of the cloud. And uh, span B is the slower, and it's underneath, right? Underneath on a on an uptrend, above on a downtrend. And the area in between here is called the Kumo or the cloud, and that's where it really gets its name, Ichimoku Cloud. And so this cloud area, 
I think it does a great job of predicting support and resistance in trends. It can tell you when you're in a trend, when you've broken above the cloud. And, you know, some of the indicators we look for, the indications are, hey, we've got a crossover, fast over slow, and price is broken above or broken through the cloud. And that can tell us, hey, a trend has started. And you can see in this, this chart I'm showing, AEM, that uh, the cloud did predict some good support areas. Even though price pulled back to it, it, it was some support and, it, and the trend continued. And so that's, that's pretty valuable to know. And eventually, you know, when the trend changes, price is going to bust through the cloud. If I go on mute um, at an odd place, it's because I... It's spring and there's pollen and I got allergies and so I don't want to be coughing in your speakers there. So if I mute real quick, that's what's going on. All right, so that's the cloud. And, you know, again, when we get crossovers, it can indicate the beginning of a trend, but there can be some false signals. So we want to combine it with some other things to, be, to have confirmation, okay? Um, again, the, the cloud can really do a great job of predicting. Once we get into a trend and it's confirmed, it can really do a good job of predicting support areas. Okay, I combine it with Elliott Wave, and I know, you know, we got uh, a lot of people online, and, and some number of them are rolling their eyes. Oh, Elliott Wave, one of those guys, right? And, you know, that was kind of my first impression, too, until I, uh, until I came across uh, Bennett McDowell, who was my mentor, and he actually wrote the latest book called Elliott Wave Technique Simplified. I got to write a chapter in it. It's really good. It's on Amazon. I'd encourage you to get it. It's a great investment for your uh, trading library. So Bennett teaches, and I do too now, an incredibly simple approach to Elliott Wave theory, right? Most approaches, you know, you got about, about it seems like 90 patterns to go matter, to go me uh, memorize and try to identify and mark your charts up and and the practitioners can never agree on wave count, right? This shape I'm showing you right here, this is it. This is all we're looking for. All we want to do is try and catch an impulsive wave three, or if it's already there, we want to try and catch a correction on four if there's enough profit in it. And if four is already in place when we come look at a chart, we want to try and catch the next impulsive wave in five. That's all we're looking for, right? It's that simple. I only have three trades, trade setups, you know, breaking out into a new trend in three, correction from a big trend and a continuation of that trend. Those are my only three setups, right? It can be bullish or bearish, same thing. Pretty interesting that uh, Ralph Nelson Elliott was developing this back about the same time that uh, Goichi Asada was developing Ichimoku Cloud, um, and now they're both in play here, and we can do a lot more with them with, you know, the technology and computers and the charting platforms that we have. So I use, I use Ichimoku Cloud. I use Elliott Wave, right? Just a quick look at how it looks on a chart. You know, all, all we want to look for is either a channeling market that looks like it's getting ready to break out, and that has a good chance of being a new impulsive wave, or we come look at the chart, and an impulsive wave already happened, and at some point, there's a really high probability it's going to correct, and it's going to correct, correct down to a Fibonacci level, typically 38.2 to 61.8. After it corrects, if we have evidence of a new trend beginning, the high probability is it's going to extend up into a Fibonacci extension area. So that's wave five, wave four, wave wave three, four, five, right? It's pretty simple. That's that's the extent of my Elliott wave, right? That's the only memory memorization we got to do. So we had a nice entry on this chart called out as it broke out of this channel, right? All the way up. Pretty cool. Um, wave four wasn't really tradable. There wasn't enough. By the time it was confirmed, there wasn't enough left in this particular chart. But once wave five proved that it was starting, and I'll talk about that proof. We had some pro we had some good profit up into the target zone, right? And in, t in terms of proof, what do I mean by proof? I'm looking for again, a, you know, a crossover of the fast over slow in each local cloud. I want to see a break above the uh, above the cloud. If we're in a corrective wave, I want to see you know a clear wave three before it. If we're looking for the next one, I want to see that we had an impulsive and a corrective wave, and I want to see evidence that the trend has turned from um, impulsive to corrective. Hey, Dow theory gives us the tools for that. Dow theory tells us that a trend, or at least a, a, a leg of a trend, is a better way to think about it. You know, if you're in an uptrend, you got higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And as long as you're getting higher highs, higher lows, you're in an uptrend, right? And if, as long as you're getting lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, 
or lows or highs, <laughs> um, you're in a downtrend. And when that changes, you know, we can see when it begins, it takes three data points to confirm that a trend is beginning or has changed. You get a high, higher, low, new high. Hmm, looks like we got an uptrend starting. As long as this pattern continues, it's going up, right? Even through these downturns, right? We don't have to worry. Now, if it starts taking out previous lows, uh oh, it may be turning, right? And that's how downturns begin. Three data points, low, lower, high, new, low. And it continues down until that pattern gets broken. So those are some tools I apply to a chart just to confirm what trend are we in? Is it still continuing? And has it turned? Do I have proof of that, right? In a high probability trade, I want, you know, I want a high probability winning. I want clear support and resistance areas so I can apply risk management, stop placement. And I want a high reward to risk ratio. Um, I'm not going to take a trade that at the outset has the chance to lose more than it's going to make. It doesn't make any sense to me, right? Uh, the math works way better if you have uh, uh, bigger winners than your losers, right? You can get away with a fairly low win rate if your winners are substantially bigger than your losers. The only way you're going to get those is to embark on trades that have the potential to be bigger winners than the losers, right? So I calculate risk per share, you know, my entry price minus my stop. Um, I calculate reward per share, you know, what's the conservative target. I have a range using Fibonacci extension, so I take the conservative target, my entry price, the difference, target minus entry, you know, these are long trade examples, it's a buck 64. So if my risk is 0.56, my reward potential is 1.64, I've got a risk, reward to risk ratio of 2.93. Well, that's good, that's almost 3 to 1, right? I'll take that every day, right? Very good. So for scanning, what we can do using Ichimoku Cloud, some, some of the indicators built into the platform, any platform, I'm going to demonstrate at TradeStation, but you can do this with any platform, right? Um, you can use the indicators built in to narrow a really large list of symbols down pretty quickly and make it manageable, right? And then we're going to look at charts, and what I teach is let's, let's get down to a manageable set of charts, and then as we scan charts, these patterns that I'm looking for, particularly Elliott waves, you know, I'm looking for something in a channel, I look for uh, an impulsive wave that already happened that maybe is ready to correct, or I'm looking for an impulsive wave that corrected is ready for the next impulsive move. If those aren't there, let's go to a different chart. Right, let's not anguish over it. Um, because Elliott wave technique only works on charts that have the pattern. I think some people that get frustrated with it, they'll pull up a chart, and they go, I can't get a wave count. I can't, I can't see it. Well, you know what? Probably not there. <laughs> not every chart ex uh, displays an Elliott wave pattern, but when they do, pretty powerful, right? And if, if we have a sequence, a multi-step sequence, the more steps that are filled in in the early part of the sequence, the higher the probability that the, the subsequent steps are going to get filled in, and that's what we're trying to trade off of. That's what they, uh, the edge we're trying to uh, trade with there. Let me show you a couple live charts that uh, and, and kind of bring these uh, these ideas in, into play here. Let me show you a chart a trade that we're in right now. This is a PWR. So again, I'm using TradeStation here. This is a daily chart. This is Quanta Services symbol PWR. <laughs> Scott says that reboot was messed up. Yeah. Threw me off, man. That's for sure. Okay, PWR. You know, we just look at this chart, and you don't have to get all complicated about it. We say, wow, look, big impulsive move. Super clear. Um, there's not, you know, uh, a whole bunch of arcane, subtle things to memorize here. It's got a big impulsive move. And guess what? It's correcting. And, it, and uh, after you have a big impulsive move, an awful lot of the time, they correct, right? Trees don't grow to the sky. Even if this thing's going to go up to 100 bucks, right? It's going to have corrections along the way. And when a correction starts, and again, I use a combination of things. I look at Dow theory, right? We had higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Whoa, low, lower high, new low. Looks like it's turning. Broke through the cloud. Oh, broke through some resistance or some support. This looks like it's going down. By the time it got down to 3506, I said, Hey, it's on. We took a short entry on this. I, I mark my charts up. I just do it consistently so I can come to a chart instantly, see what I'm looking at here. So I'll use this light blue line for my entry. 
I use the red line for my stop and a green line for my target. Okay, and then look here, we're in, we're in some nice profit on this trade, right? We took entry, short entry, 3506. Our stop's currently at 3674. And I can see the reward to risk on this chart just by looking at the distance between my entry and my stop, my entry and my target. Oh, well, look, that's two or three to one. Super. Take the trade, right? So we're short that. It's, uh, how's it doing in P&L wise? I'm, I track this here. This is what I called out in my uh, live trading room. So on a $50,000 account, we're, we're at 534 profit, 3.86. So we're early in the trade. That's looking good. It's going our way. It's very nice. Very nice. Let's look at one more that I like, and then we're going to um, start scanning, and we can look at some of your trades as well. Okay? I really want you to walk away with a handful of actionable trades, and I'll show you how I find them. But uh, let's uh, let's look at another one here. Uh, I like I like Twitter. We're long Twitter. I like this one even better, FireEye. So remember, I said I'm looking for an impulsive move. Well, that looks impulsive to me. That looks crazy, right? This thing went from $55 down to, uh, what, uh, just over 10 right? Tried to bounce and then just channeled forever, and oh, look, it broke out of this channel, right? Now, this could be the corrective wave up to a midpoint of about uh, 3072. We've got a retracement zone, a Fibonacci retracement zone here between these blue lines. So I'm just calling my target at the conservative level, right, the bottom level of it. You know, so if it only gets up to 2630 from my entry at 1418, that'll be pretty disappointing, right? Rather rather than going to 35, gosh, it would only double, right? Shucks. Uh, that looks like a great trade. It's starting to take off, and it won't it won't go straight up. You know, if you've noticed, uh, charts don't move in straight lines. It didn't move down in a straight line, and it won't go up. It will go higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows but there's a really high probability of it getting up into this target zone. So I like FireEye a lot, and that is a trade um, that if you're interested, if you agree with that method, you might want to check it out. Okay. So how do I go find trades? That's what people ask me a lot. It's like, great, you got some good trades. How do you find them? It's a good question. I'm going to show you right now. Remember I said there might be an awkward silence as I mute so I don't cough on you. Okay, so I think the beginning of any, any scanning for trades, I think the, the most uh, constructive way, the most efficient way to start with that is to come up with a thesis, right? A, a thesis statement and say, I think this is going on in the market. You know, it could be any thesis, right? And, you know, you could come up with your own. And, uh, you know, a thesis is an ungrounded, unfounded assessment, right? It says, I think, I think this is going on. And then we'll, what we do is try and go gather some evidence and see if there are trades that have good setup parameters. And you go, and you go, oh, that thesis didn't work out so good. I guess I was wrong, right? Or, wow, I just, I just hit the vein, man. Here they all are. I was right, okay? But you got to start somewhere. And... Using a, the scanning technique I'm going to show you, you can prove or disprove your thesis pretty quickly, and if you're not finding a trade, you can move on and create a new one. What we don't want to do, I don't want to do, is begin trading based on ungrounded assessments, right? You know, I think the Fed's going to do this, and the market's going to respond that way. Um, that's a dice roll, man. I trade based on the realities of the market. The only reality in the market is price and volume, right? A certain number of securities did sell for a certain price. And the pattern of that, um, if it falls into, again, sequences, the next, step, the next steps in the sequence become highly probable quite often. So that's what I'm looking for. So let's, let's just create a thesis, pull one out of thin air. Um, so my thesis, let's start with one, would be that, uh, man, technology stocks have run up a lot. And I'll bet we see some big impulsive moves and I wonder if that is done, and there are some that are getting ready to correct. So my thesis is, I think technology stick stocks might be getting ready to correct. But I don't know yet. We've got to prove that, right? But that's a thesis. That's a beginning place to search the market. <coughs> Excuse me. didn't hit the mute button quick enough. Okay. 
Now, what's really nice is uh, 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 ETFs are, are a really nice tool to help us in our scanning. Um, and I say that, so I'm going to look. I'm going to look at the tech sector. I'm going to look at the financial services sector. So, like uh, uh, this Spider website, you know, they got a whole bunch of uh, ETFs. May not be your favorite ETF. Doesn't matter because that's not how we're using it. What we're doing is, you know, XLF is the financials uh, ETF. Oh, okay. So I wonder what the holdings in XLF are. Well, here it is on their website, and how nice of them they stick it in the Excel file that I can download. That makes it really easy. So I can get a pretty good list of stocks in that sector that I might be interested in. Just pull it off their website. So let's look at uh, XLK, which is the tech sector, because that was my initial thesis. I go, I think tech might be, you know, I'd be ready to correct here. So here we go. Here's the holdings in XLK, the tech ETF. It looks like we got about, you know what, 70-something stocks there. Cool. Got a list. What I can do is grab this list from Excel. Right? Let's just grab the symbols right here. Copy them. Good. Now I'm going to go over to radar screen and you know it uh it uh all platforms have similar capabilities like this. You know, some kind of table where you can screen put indicators in, put lists of stocks in. There we go. So there's my tech uh, list, my XLK list of tech stocks. And I've got the Ichimoku Cloud indicator set up here on my uh, radar screen in my table. And what it's doing is, you know, give me all the values for Tenkan, Kaijun, Span A, Span B. Um, it's telling me the trend direction based on whether we have a crossover, fast over slow, and whether the price is above the cloud or below the cloud. So if we have a crossover, fast over slow, and the price is above the cloud, that's an uptrend, right? <clears throat> and that's pretty interesting. Now, it's really hard to slice and dice and sort here in Radar Screen. Their tools are not nearly as adept as uh, my favorite, Excel. But what's really cool is I can just grab all this data, however much of it I want, and I can pop it over into Excel. And let's go look at it. This is uh, XLK. Oh, now I did it, so you don't have to watch me fuss around with uh, Excel. Now I've got all this data plugged into Excel, and I've added some logic statements. So what I want is, I said, hey, if uh, if the trend direction's up and price is above the cloud, that's a bullish signal. So I just put a little if then statement. And if trend direction's down and price is below the cloud, that's a bear signal. Right? And I also calculate current price. How close is it to the cloud? Because I want to catch trends early. If I got a bearish trend and price is just under the cloud, it's just broken, there may be some profit left. There might be something exciting going on there. Right? So, uh, again, my thesis was I think tech might be getting ready to correct. So I'm really interested in this point um, on this particular scan with this thesis, bearish trades. I want to go short. So I want a bearish signal. I want to sort on those. I want to add a level. I want to sort on uh, uh, yeah, price location uh, below the cloud. Yeah, good. All right, so here's my top candidates. I got uh, here, right? Bearish signal is true, and this is a, a increasing order of how far price is away from the current, uh, the, the edge of the cloud, you know. So it looked like uh, WU just broke through. So let's go check that out, see if the, if the chart looks good. Okay, let's go to my chart. Stick in WU. What? Well, there's a messy chart. Remember I said um, one of the things that can frustrate people and a mistake to make about uh, Elliott Wave is to try and stare a pattern onto a chart. Now, it's a messy, uh, volatile chart. Now, there is, you could you could call this all a, a big uh, impulsive move, pretty ragged, um, and you could call this a corrective move, but, you know, I've looked at thousands of charts, and I can tell you if that's a corrective move, it's already in the target. Uh, it's too late for that one. That didn't take us very long to figure out, did it? It was pretty easy. Let's look at the next one, PAYX. Hmm. 
hmm, this is still a little bit raggedy, but that's clearly an impulsive uptrend. That's clearly an uptrend, right? The higher highs, higher lows are big for sure, right? And even that pattern got interrupted a little, but from, you know, from here to here, this is an uptrend. And look, we can see the momentum coming out using a price oscillator down, momentum growing to the downside. So that's kind of cool. And let's just see how far will this thing correct? What's the high probability correction zone for paychecks? Well, the midpoint is right here. It's between these two blue lines, 38.2 to 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. Midpoint's here at about 52 bucks. But let's, uh, let's be conservative. We want to make sure in kind of the, you know, because this is the zone. It's not predicting exactly where. This is the zone. So let's say conservatively, as an adjective, not a noun, that um, price would get to this level, which is 54.88. If we were to take an entry um, right now, that is where it would be. So we got this distance for reward and the legitimate stop, right? The legitimate stop for this would be, um, let's, let's uh, expand this out a little bit, right? Oops. Uh, remember I talked about Dow theory, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. If, if we go to a new low, right? If we go to a new low, this is going to be the last high. So let's say that's where our stop's going to be. That's the right place, right? Because price is going to keep going down on lower lows, lower highs, unless this trend gets broken. And if it goes above that lower high, then the trend's over and we want to be out of that thing. So let's go a couple ticks down, let it put in a new low. That's where our stop would be. And you can see if we blow this up, and that's not a huge, huge thing, but um, it looks pretty solid. It looks pretty high probability. So stop at 58.98, an entry at 57.28, and a target at 54.88. This is 1.5 to 2 times, so this is a good, this one's good to go. That was the second one we looked at on our list, um, so that was good. That didn't take too much effort to find. Let's uh, keep looking. We're on XLK, and let's look here at this one, QRVO. Is that like Cuervo? Is this Jose Cuervo, the, the tequila company? Uh, Corvo, no, no such luck, right? Okay, well look, there's an impulsive move. There's a nice impulsive move up. And uh, look, we're starting to lose some momentum here. It's breaking down under the cloud here. So, same same quick analysis, right? So let's see if we, you know, let's let's let it get low again. Let's put in a new low for our entry. Let's let it let it prove itself. If it does that, we got a high right here. Uh, the wick of that candle, there's a high, I don't know if you can see it on the webinar there, and uh, target down here. Well, that's pretty close to two to one. So if it hits that, that's a good one. That's a good short right there. So, uh-oh, LP says lost sound. Everybody else good? Everybody else hear me? Don't tell me I've been talking into a dead mic for 20 minutes. I did that one time. So that'll humble you. Oh, thank you, Joseph. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Hey, that was a pretty rich vein so far, right? Two out of three trades had good setups. So let's try another one. Right, that was XLK. Um, that was the uh, tech sector. What if we had that thesis about the financial sector as well, right? So XLF. I did the exact same thing here. won't bore you with going through the steps again. And the number one trade here that it called out is uh, Zion. How's Zion look? There it is, right? Big impulsive move starting the correction. The, uh, the price target zone looks like it would be uh, center point down here, conservative right here, stop. So that, this looks good, right? I'd let it put in a new low, prove that it's heading down. First one, nice, CME, next up. Same deal, hey, this is a rich scan right now, this is awesome. So same deal, right? I was scanning earlier this morning in my live trading room, we were looking at a couple of different sectors and they were not this rich. I know there's a few of my uh, 
uh, room participants here going, "Hey, where were these this morning, Dean? What's up? Just found them. <laughs> just found them now. Well, we were looking at them tomorrow. You can bet that. This one's great, right? This one looks really, really good. So CME Group looks like a really nice short. So that's we took you know two huge, huge sectors had about 150 symbols combined, right? We had to look at a few, and what we learned here was I think that the uh, the thesis was pretty good, pretty good. So let's see. Um, next, hey, what what charts are you interested in? Let's take a look at some of your stocks, and I will give you my opinion. See, uh. I'll just analyze it using my method and uh, see what I think. If you type in a couple symbols there, be happy to take a look. Okay. INSY for Joseph. That sounds familiar. We've looked at this before. Hey, you may get the prize, Joseph. So if you were here earlier when I started, I said, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a big impulsive move. And I expect after a big impulsive move that there's probably going to be a correction at some point. Right? Look at this big impulsive move down. It get more impulsive than that. It channeled. It tried to break out. Failed. Channeled some more. It looks like it's breaking out. Right? This one could retrace. Could. Right? There's probability. There's not certainty. This could retrace up to a midpoint of $23 from 11 That's more than double. That is pretty nice. So you get the gold star so far, Joseph. Very nice. AKS for Trade Me. So one of the other things I said was... We look for a big impulsive move that has corrected, and then we're looking for the next move. So this one has a big impulsive move. It has corrected, right? It corrected where? Right into a Fibonacci retracement zone. Sweet. So it has not proven that the next impulsive move is has begun yet. How many data points does it take? Three. Higher high, higher low, new high. We want to see it break the cloud. But if and this is a guess, right? We don't know yet. If this is the bottom of wave four, where is it going? Going up into the extension zone, 1156 to 1514. We got to wait. This one's not ready yet. The previous one was closer. Was closer. Yeah, VRX. I've been watching Valiant for a long time, and we were looking at that in the trading room a couple days ago. This one, if it pops, if it breaks, it's going to be a monster. Probability, right? Nobody knows that for sure. Um, and and I'm, a, I'm a technical trader, not a fundamental trader, right? Uh, I know VRX has been the poster child of many a politician, everything that's wrong with Big Pharma. Don't care. Don't care about that. What I care about is it's come down from, you know, it, it fell out of the sky. Right? What was the high on this? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, 250 bucks, and it's down here um, at what? 12. And the retracement zone, and this thing could rally just based on people having to cover their shorts. If it starts coming up off the bottom, and people got to cover their their short positions, that could drive a substantial rally. The bottom of the target zone here, 100 bucks. Right? You know, gee, only if it only made it to Fibonacci 23.6. That would, you know, only 66. Dang, we would only get 5x. This one could be a four or five bagger easily. Um, no guarantee, but it, when it breaks, it hasn't broken yet, but when it does, hang on, man. That could be really good. Okay. Great. We'll take a look at a couple symbols there. That was awesome. Hey, so um, if you're interested in what I'm doing here, uh, there's a couple ways that you can get involved, and I got to got a sweet offer for you of course I do so I run a stock pick service right I, I run an advisory service so you know a lot of people have jobs they can't really follow along and and they really just want you know hey I, I like what you're doing 
right? And so um, I publish my picks. These are picks I'm taking with my own money, right? I would not recommend a pick in my uh, advisory service that I wouldn't be willing to trade with my own cash. And that's how I started, trading my own trades. And then people were like, hey, that looks good. Can you can you tell us before you take a trade? And it turned into a business. Okay, here's my returns over the years, uh, 2013, 57.3, you know, it was, it was the bull market was still raging, 14, you know, the last couple of years it slowed down, got a little tougher, but we're still booking solid returns, right? You know, anybody tells you you're going to take a $5,000 account, turn in a million bucks, you know, run, just run, right? But we're booking really solid results, and if you're curious, you know, what's behind that curtain, I, I try to be as transparent as possible. There's every trade I took in 2016, what my win rate is, you know, uh, again, I'm taking these trades with, with my money, they're real, I'm doing this. Um, and so those, that's my track record. Year to date, we're on track so far, right? We're just coming up on halfway through the year. We're on, we're on track to bust that, to do better than last year. Who knows what's going to happen, but uh, it's looking really good. So I have a, a stock advisory service, stock and options. I, I give you picks, um, one to two picks every week on average. It's ones I'm buying with my own money, right? Um, and I include option contract details. So, you know, you like trading with shares? trade the shares. I give all the parameters for that. Like trading with options, I give you the option contract parameters that I'm trading with. I like using options, but we track it through the life of the trade. I give you an update on, hey, we're going to take profit. We're going to move a stop. We're going to close the trade. You get an update on email and or SMS text if that's what you like. And you can try that. You know, list price on my website is 127 bucks a month. And uh, people have been subscribed at that price and are happy because they're making money. But, um, I'll give you an offer here in the uh, webinar. You can try it for 30 days for $39, 100% money back guarantee. You don't like it, you send me an email, leave me a voicemail, and say, nah, not my thing, Dean. No questions asked, no hassle, no hard feelings. I give you your money back, right? And then the ongoing price, nine, 97 bucks a month. And so the, uh, the URL, I got it on the screen there. I got a tiny URL, so it's easier if you uh, don't have access to the chat window. But I'll post that chat as to everyone as well. So 39 bucks. Check out the, the stock picks for 30 days, and then an ongoing 25% discount at uh, at a 97 bucks a month. I also have a trading room I've mentioned. Right, the list price 79 bucks a month. You can join the trading room for 59 a month. Same thing. You know, I don't want anybody. You know, if it's not your thing, I, get a refund, man. Just let me know. In the first 30 days, you don't like it, get a refund. After that, it's month to month. There's no commitment. We watch the E-mini, the gold, the oil for sector and market direction. We trade news events as they come out. And then I identify stock and option trades, short-term, long-term, 10-minute charts, 60-minute charts, daily charts. Right? And we're doing well. The, uh, the track record, I've just started the, the live trading room in this methodology uh, this, this year. But just a quick snapshot, here's the trading room positions that we are currently in, right? We got, uh, looks like 14 positions, right? And there's the P&L. So the current P&L of the open positions is what? Uh, just show it real quick. New sheet. Don't you love Excel? It's one of my favorite apps, right? So the current P&L of open trades on a $50,000 account is $7,800, so that's not too bad. And the uh, we're at about a 60% win rate on the ones we've closed. Um, so the, the trading room uh, picks are going really well. We here's the picks here's the trades we're in, and we publish a watch list as well. And if you can't attend at some point, then um, this is all posted on the website and you know updates and stuff, so you can go check it out. So. So it's a pretty good deal. So uh, live trading room, get it for 59 bucks a month, 30-day guarantee. But wait, there's more. But uh, Slices it, dices. During this webinar, um, if you sign up before the last speaker ends and before Renee hangs up the phone, if you try one, you can get the other one for 30 days for free. Because you may be going, I don't know, trading room picks, trading room picks. By the way, here's the... Uh, Here's the uh, link for the trading room. I just posted it. If you sign up for one before 5 p.m. Pacific time, before the session ends, you get them both for 30 days. I'll give you 30 days of the other one for free.